Do you sometimes wonder about the purpose of your job? Whether it is affecting our lives in a positive way? I do. Three years ago, I was asked to join a company developing a new fastening technology. Simply speaking, an advanced version of a screw. And although fastening elements are used everywhere around us, you probably wouldn't consider them the world's sexiest product, or one that can make the world a better place. And to be honest, neither did I. I had serious doubts. Is this really my contribution to the world? Can a new way of joining materials make a difference? Let's put things into perspective first. I'm talking about a topic that is nearly as old as mankind itself. Already, our ancestors needed to find ways to put things together. It was important to transform a simple stone and a simple stick into something more valuable, like an axe. And today is not that much different, just a little bit more complex. A Boeing 747 has roughly six million single parts. Do you know how many of them are fasteners holding everything together? 50%. So the way we join things is definitely more important than we might think. But fastening elements have not significantly changed over the past 100 years. A screw still is a screw. So let's change that. We have developed a completely new way of joining materials based on three elements. Ultrasound as an energy source, a polymeric fastening element, and a porous structure. The ultrasound sets the polymeric fastening element into very fast vibrations, between 20 and 40,000 oscillations per second. This liquefies the surface of the pin, but its core remains stiff, so it can be used like a, a piston that is pushed in, driving the liquefied material into the surrounding pores. So how is this going to make a difference? The first application is in the medical field, where we find one of the most natural lightweight materials of all, bones. They have a porous structure to achieve high strength with minimum weight. But still, they need to be fixed sometimes. The conventional way to do this is to use metallic screws. This takes a lot of time. And after the surgery, you have metal pieces in your body. Especially for kids, that's a problem because their bones are still growing. So the metal elements need to be taken out in a second surgery. The new joining technology has proven a better way to do this, and I would like to show you how this works in action. Here, you have a porous material similar to a human bone. This is the ultrasonic uh, tool, and the oscillations are so small that you cannot even see them with your naked eyes. For demonstration purposes, I will now connect this string to the porous material using the polymeric fastener. Without ultrasound, there is no chance to push this pin into the material. With ultrasound, it should work. One, two, three. That's it. And since the polymeric material immediately solidifies again, you can directly put load on it. Even those heavy weights from the gym. <laughs> the process cuts down surgery time by more than 50%. And additionally, there is no need for a second surgery, because the pins can be made out of reabsorbable materials that are slowly degraded by our own body and replaced naturally with bone. Up until today, more than 10,000 kids were already operated successfully using this technology. 
and we are right now in the middle of a global rollout. After this successful entry in the medical field, the question was, what might be the next big thing? How can we maximize the impact of the technology? And the answer to that question was cars. I'm a car guy. Where other people see just a vehicle that gets them from A to B, I see a masterpiece of human engineering and the drive for freedom. I love the smell of cars and even the feeling of touching the steering wheel. <laughs> But this freedom machine has a high cost. And I'm not talking about its price tag. It's one of the main contributors to the destruction of our planet. So why can't we push technology to fulfill our human desire for mobility in a more sustainable way? Electric vehicles might be an alternative, but are they really helping the environment, or are they just a, a playing piece in someone's political agenda? Unfortunately, there are no trivial answers, but there's one thing that I can tell you for sure. A lighter car needs less energy. Regardless of whether we talk about a diesel, gasoline, electric, or even a fuel cell car, that's just the laws of physics. So let's assume we would build cars that are 5% lighter. A very small change. But on a global scale, the savings created would sum up to more than 200 million tons of CO2 every year. This offsets the CO2 footprint of 40 million people. Sounds like a step in the right direction. So how can we make cars lighter? Lightweight materials, like honeycomb structures, for example, are already available, but they are very difficult to connect. Conventional fastening elements, like screws, simply do not hold due to the lack of a solid structure in lightweight materials. And using glue as an alternative slows down mass production too much. So the lack of an efficient way to join lightweight materials is somehow holding us back. And this is exactly where the new joining technology comes into the picture. You can use the open spaces in lightweight materials to form a very strong bond. And the process takes only fractions of a second. But that's not the end of the story. In a further development, you can also turn around the basic principle of the technology. Instead of working with a porous material, we integrated the pores into the fastening element itself. And instead of melting the fastening element, the two materials that need to be connected are melted. This process opens up a sheer infinite number of possibilities and applications for the technology. It allows engineers to work with multi-material combinations to further drive down the weight of vehicles. And here comes the good news. The first cars with the technology inside will hit the road before the end of this year. So can a new way of joining materials make a difference? Yes, it can. Because innovation sometimes doesn't happen where you would expect. Innovation very often takes place in fairly unnoticed areas and from there sparks technological breakthroughs transforming our lives, fulfilling a bigger purpose. Thank you. <laughs>